This discussion is going to be centered around the background, evaluation, and treatment of mammalian bites. My name is Samuel Francis, and I'm one of the residents in the Duke Emergency Medicine program. The learning objectives of this talk will include the following. I will first discuss some background information on mammalian bites. I will then discuss the initial evaluation and management of these bites. This includes potential workup, including lab work and imaging, as well as treatment. In the emergency department setting, mammalian bites compose approximately 1% of all visits annually. Of these patients, 1% will require admission to the hospital for care of their injury. Dog bites are the most common type of bite seen in the emergency department, composing 80 to 90% of all bites. Cats are the second most common type of mammalian bite, composing about 5 to 10% of bites. Human bites are the third most common seen, and they are approximately 1 to 5% of visits. The major reason people seek medical attention early in the course of the bite is from the trauma sustained from the bite itself. This can include bleeding, fractures, and foreign bodies in the wound. Patients also commonly present in a delayed fashion, often waiting hours to days with infection of the wound site as their primary complaint. The microbiology behind mammalian bites is often complex with wound cultures in dog and cat bites often being polymicrobial. Some specific pathogens seen in isolates include pasturella species, staph species, strep species, and anaerobes. With cats specifically, Bartonella hanselae is a bacteria specific to get cat bites that is known to cause cat scratch disease with its characteristic regional lymphadenopathy near the site of the scratch or bite. A dog bite carries a small risk of infection for a pathogen named Capnocytophagia canamorsis, which can cause fulminant sepsis with disseminated intravascular coagulation. Human bites are also polymicrobial oftentimes with Echinella species, aerobic gram-positive cocci, and anaerobes as the common isolates. When a patient presents to the emergency department with mammalian bites, there are some important steps in the evaluation of the bite that must be performed. Obtaining a history of the bite is seminal in determining the additional steps needed. One will need to elicit when the bite occurred and with what kind of mammal caused the injury. One should ask if the patient knew the animal or not, as this is often important for the decision to give rabies prophylaxis. Additionally, you want to ask the patient if they have experienced any signs of systemic infection, such as fevers, chills, or sweats, as this can often guide whether or not to start antibiotic therapy. You also need to ask where the patient was bit. If the patient was attacked, there can often be multiple locations for bite injuries. In the physical examination of the patient, it is paramount to expose the wound entirely. As the bite will often be painful, you may need to use local anesthesia, such as lidocaine, to allow for adequate exploration of the wound. The wound should be cleaned with betadine, copiously irrigated with normal saline. One side note regarding irrigation, in the case of puncture wounds, the irrigation should not be too vigorous because of the risk of introducing bacteria to deeper layers of the underlying tissue. Finally, you need to perform a thorough exploration of all wounds for evidence of foreign body, such as teeth. Additionally, you will need to evaluate for deep tissue injury, such as tendon or joint violation. If there were symptoms of systemic infection or signs on your physical exam, Blood cultures are recommended as bacteremia is possible in cases of mammalian bites. If the wound site appears infected, wound cultures can be obtained to aid in the treatment of the infection. Though they are often obtained, a complete blood count as well as inflammatory markers such as the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein 
are not sensitive or specific, and often don't give much additional information. Plain films are often obtained at the location of injury to evaluate for several things. First, they will highlight underlying fractures that can be the result from the trauma. They also allow for radio-opaque foreign bodies to be seen. Contrast material can be used to evaluate for joint space infiltration on plain films as well. Ultrasound can be a useful bedside adjunct to evaluate for the evidence of foreign body remnants or tendon injury in the hands of a skilled operator. MRI is rarely used in this setting, but would allow for a more thorough evaluation of potential osteomyelitis or pyomyositis in this setting. Mammalian bites can often appear to be simple lacerations that would only require several stitches to close. However, primary closure is rarely performed. The reason for this is the fact that studies have shown that primary closure increases the risk of infection of mammalian bites. There are exceptions to this rule that will be discussed. In the case of simple dog bites, meaning no evidence of infection, no evidence of deep tissue injury, primary closure can be performed because the risk of infection is very low in that type of wound. The other type of mammalian bite injury that is often closed with primary closure are injuries to the face. Cosmetic outcomes to a sensitive area, like the face, are better with primary closure. The brisk blood supply to the face is also thought to decrease the risk of infection to wounds of that area. Antibiotics are started with injuries at high risk of infection. Some indications include bites with deep penetrating injury, crush injuries, often seen in cases of police dogs or other large breed dogs, injuries close to the bone or joint space, and wounds that require primary closure. Individuals who are immunocompromised, such as patients with AIDS or on chemotherapy, should also be started on antibiotics. Fight bites, which will be discussed shortly, also require antibiotics. If the patient has an injury requiring inpatient admission, IV antibiotics are often started. Beta-lactams are the first-line agents, with ampicillin sulbactam or piperacillin tazobactam being recommended agents. For oral outpatient therapy, again beta-lactams are recommended. Amoxicillin clavulinate is often the go-to antibiotic for outpatient therapy and is often referred to as dogmentin because of its common use in the treatment of mammalian bites. If the patient has a penicillin allergy, a combination of doxycycline and clindamycin is a reasonable alternative. As with any type of skin disruption, you want to determine the tetanus status of the patient and administer the vaccination as needed. You can consider administering the immunoglobulin if the patient has a dirty wound without previous vaccination of the Tdap vaccine. Rabies is an extremely rare but feared complication of mammalian bites. Wound cleaning is essential in reducing the risk of rabies. If you are interested in the indications for initiating rabies prophylaxis, you may go to the link underlined, which is the Center for Disease Control's website on rabies prophylaxis management. Fight bites are a specific type of human bite that require special consideration. Fight bites are injuries obtained to the hand of an individual following punching another individual in the face with the victim's teeth penetrating the fist. These bites are vital to recognize as they can result in significant sequelae including infection, morbidity with hand injury, and possible amputation. When patients first present with fight bites, they can often be clinically subtle, and the patient will often not directly admit to the source of their injury. They are commonly found on the third or fourth MCP or PIP joint of their dominant hand. Alcohol is commonly involved, and young males are the individuals most commonly seen with this type of injury. There's minimal overlying tissue to the joint space and deep space tissues at the site of injury, so infection can occur rapidly and spread quickly. If there is any concern over joint space involvement, 
or if the wound appears infected, do not hesitate to get hand specialists involved in their care, as washout and debridement in the operating room may be required. In review, in cases of mammalian bites, there are several cognizant points to remember. In obtaining the history of a mammalian bite, be sure to ask about what type of animal, as well as the locations of injury. Proper cleaning of the wound is vital to minimize the risk of infection. Cultures may be obtained if there is evidence of systemic involvement, and plain imaging is recommended to reduce the risk of foreign bodies remaining at the wound site. Treatment is usually closure by secondary intention, and I discussed the exceptions to that recommendation. Antibiotics are usually initiated in cases of high-risk injury. Finally, fight bites are a subtle but can't-miss diagnosis that can cause significant morbidity in the hands of often young individuals. These are the primary sources that I used in this presentation. Thank you for your time.